So it's two, maybe three months ago, I was supposed to get this equipment, and I finally got it last week or week before last. And I'm trying to get acclimated to it. And I tried two or three different kinds, and then I had to wait for the therapist to come fit the mask on me and all that stuff. And that's not working out good. And then I, I go to sleep, and then halfway through the night, something malfunctions, or I knock the mask off, and it wakes me up. And I got to get up and turn the lights on and fiddle with it. And then after I do that, I can't go back to sleep. Well, I had one of those episodes this week. And, uh,. So while I was laying there trying to go back to sleep and not being able to, I, I started thinking about things. One of the things I thought about was I just watched a video that afternoon. Denzel Washington made a video and he was talking about his childhood and his Christian upbringing and how he'd gotten away from things. And then he talked about his uh, coming to Jesus Christ's experience, and he, and he talked about his getting away and then getting back experience. And I, it got me thinking about something, and I thought about a, I had a similar experience to his. Went off somewhere and got away from where I should have been and stayed there several years and finally started moving back to where I belonged. And that's what he was talking about. He's talking to a, minister I know he's and he related it to like in the Bible when people uh, tried to get away from God and they went off to Egypt they left their home and went to Egypt for some reason or another and he's talked about there's several different instances in the Bible where that happened and so he calls that experience going to Egypt so I'm going to steal his analogy today and I'm going to tell you that I went to Egypt when I was I know middle teenager. I got smarter than all the adults in my life and I started going my own way and I, and I, and I went to Egypt and it was probably 15, I was probably there 15 years or more and then I decided I was in the wrong place and I needed to come back and this little story I'm going to tell you was not an experience I had which here I am where I shouldn't be and then bang here I am I had an experience and it put me right back where I belonged it it was a transition to get from where I'd gone to that I shouldn't have to where I needed to be coming back in fact <laughs> I'm gonna give you a heads up I'm still transitioning I know it's hard for some of you to believe you think I'm perfect, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. Still got, still working on things. But when I was about maybe 30 years old, I'm going to say this was in the late, middle to late 1970s, 76, maybe 77. I was working on second shift. I was a supervisor, production supervisor. And I had some bad habits. And one of them was being on second shift when I got off work. There wasn't nothing to do at uh, midnight when you got home. Kids were in bed. Betty, she had to go to bed and go to sleep because kids were had to get up and go to school the next day. She had duties. A lot of times I took to stopping off at one of the local establishments that was open at 12.30 and stand there until they closed and sometimes till after they closed. And I've done that one night. I stopped at a place, had a drink or two, used to drink. And this place had a back room in it that, I don't know, I guess it's pretty common knowledge. It was back there and what went on back there, but it wasn't publicized. So a lot of people could come and go in that, I'm going to call it a tavern. I think it was, I don't know where it was named, a tavern, or I think it was called a cafe, but it might have been a tavern. But it had a back room, and they, you could go in there, and, and a lot of times there was some forms of gambling going on back there. And very often it was a euchre game. A euchre game where you were playing for an amount of money, to win the game and then there was another amount of money if you got euchred that entered into it so 
he had one wager on the game and another wager on Euchre's and it went on back there a lot. And I liked it. I liked to play Euchre, so I went in there this night and I, I uh, went in, stated that my intention, I'd like to play if an opening came up, but it didn't look like they were. These guys have been playing a while. There's four of them playing, and another guy sitting over there watching. So there's five of them all right back there, and I don't think the guy watching, I don't think he was going to play. He, he, he probably would have if somebody quit and they wanted to continue the game. They needed him to be a fourth, but I, he didn't want to be a fourth. But I did, and I decided to wait a little bit and see if an opening came up where I could get in this Euchre game. So I'm watching it. <laughs> These people at this game, I, I thought I could tell this story without telling their names, but I'm not going to. I mean, I think all of them are dead, maybe, but one. One of them, I don't know what happened to him. He moved away from here, so he may not be dead. Start with him. His name was George, and he had two first names. His last name was Todd. His name was George Todd. He could have been called George Todd or Todd George. And uh, the guy over here... He, same thing, he had two first names. His, his first name was Forrest, his last name was Bradford. He, Forrest Bradford, he could have been called Bradford Forrest. They didn't call him Forrest, they called him Wiener. His name, they, everybody called him Wiener. This guy over here, his name was Rusty. Uh, actually, his name was Paul, and everybody called him Rusty. They still do, he's the only one of them, I think, that's alive still, besides me. The guy with his back to me there, his name was David, I think. But they didn't, nobody called him David, they called him Whitey. I think his last name was White, David White, they called him Whitey. And George, they called him George. And I had a friend, his name was George, but everybody called him Buddy. His family all called him Bud or Buddy. I called him George and Buddy, but... The guy sitting over there watching, his name was Bob, but... Most of the people in the tavern didn't call him Bob either. They called him Rabbi. And that's playing, I don't know how much they were playing for, but they're playing Euchre. And George and Wiener were partners, and Rusty and Whitey were partners. And George and Wiener were getting the worst of it most of the night. And Wiener, he, he worked the same place I did, and he did the same thing I did. He stopped there after work, started drinking. On, on the way home, he stopped there. And uh, he drank Stroh's beer. And he drank it in quart bottles, the big ones. And I don't know. The difference between him and me was I worked second shift, so I got off at 12 o'clock at night, and I come in there about 12.30. And so I'm there at 2 o'clock because I've been there for an hour and a half. Well, he got, he's the day shift man. <laughs> he got off at 3.30 and he got in there about 4 o'clock. And he's been there since 4 o'clock. And you can tell by looking at him he's been here a while. <laughs> or listening to him. Or seeing the results of the euchre. And George, I don't know whether George went there after work or not, but George's been there a while too. And he worked day shift as well. That's kind of what was going on. And I was sitting there watching it. And Winter, he chewed. I don't know what he chewed. I, it wasn't, he was chewing tobacco. It wasn't, I don't think it was snuff. I think it was Red Man or something like that. He chewed and then he spit. He had a, he had an empty bottle sitting there. Well, it wasn't empty anymore. He'd been spitting in it, but it, he had emptied a Stroh's bottle, and instead of them taking it off when they bought him another Stroh's quart, he had one to drink out of and one to spit in. He was spitting in that Stroh's bottle. So that's what, that's what was going on. I'm sitting there watching it. And then Wiener, he, he went to take a drink of his Stroh's, and he picked it up, and he took a big long pull on it, and Black stuff come out of his nose, and <laughs> he started gagging and coughing and hacking and spitting and jumped up and run over here and grabbed a wastebasket and 
It was awful. Cause he picked up the he picked up the bottle he'd been spitting in, took a big took a big shot of it. Well, the rest of them, <laughs> they thought that was hilarious, and so they started laughing and guffawing and carrying on and giving Wiener advice about he wasn't taking kindly to it. And I've decided I'm not going to get into game anyway, and I've already had a couple drinks, and I don't need another one. I've decided I'm going to go home. But I, I looked at this, and I looked at those people sitting there. And Rusty, just a year older than me, the rest of them was somewhat older than me than that. And I thought, man, this is, look at this. Look at him. There's got to be something better than this. And if I keep doing what I'm doing, this is this is what I'm going to look like. In fact, one of them got up and left a few minutes ago. I'd have been looking like this. I'd have sat there the rest of the night. I'd ordered another drink and sat there and drank and played euchre until who knows when. But I decided there was something better than that didn't happen immediately, but it happened shortly after that. Can't tell the exact date, but I quit drinking anything. 1979. That was probably, you know, within a year, maybe shorter time than that, after this incident. I took the last drink of anything I ever drank. Haven't missed it a bit. With some other bad habits gradually as time went on. And that was, that incident was the beginning of it. I've told that story several times. In fact, I've told it back when some of these people were still alive. And, and I said, remember that night that Wiener took a big slug of tobacco juice and come out his nose and he threw up all over the place? But they still laughed. Everybody still laughed about it. I, I could, Rusty probably still remembers it. I could, if I saw Rusty, I, I could say, Rusty, remember that time? I remember it because it, it, it was an, it was an eye opener for me, and it marks a turning point in my life. Not like I said, I didn't turn around from here to here, but I started back from Egypt that night. I was out there somewhere where I didn't need to be, and I realized that I don't need to be here, and I don't want to look like this, and this ain't where I want to go, and. I started changing things in my life, and God helped me. Been a different kind of a hard time sky video. But maybe you can learn something from it. Maybe it'll help you. If you're a young person, things aren't going the way you want them to go. Your life don't look like you expected it to look like when you got to this age. You look around you, and the people you're with, the things you're doing, not what you thought it'd be or not what you wanted it to be. Do something about it. Decide to do something different. Quit doing that same old thing that's got you where you are and got you going to where they are or where he is or where she is or whatever it is they're doing. Not good. I'm a hard times guy. Have a good day.